Student athletes who will be on the dais today will be Flo Thamba and LJ Cryer. And we'll go ahead and take questions for the student athletes. We'll go right down here in the front row on the left. John Werner, Wicker Tribune Hero. This is for Flo. Uh, they've got a pretty outstanding center in Ryan Kalkbrenner. What do you guys got to do to maybe kind of slow him down? Uh, I mean, the best thing we can do is just limit his, uh, limit his touches. Uh, usually if somebody gets the ball, you know, they're able to make any kinds of moves and stuff like that. But limiting his touches and making other, team, other, other, other players, you know, score the ball and so that definitely play in our favor. In the second row on the left. Hey there, LJ. Uh, this is Michael Haig with the Baylor Lariat. Um, I know y'all, it's a short turnaround for a quick game. What are y'all kind of seeing from Brayton? What are y'all maybe working on to try to limit them? Um, I mean, we see that they like to throw the ball to the post. Um, big fella is um, pretty good, so we got to be real physical with them and um, be physical with the guards as well to, to not um, have those post touches so easy. Follow up. And then also, you know, first tournament game for you that you got to play extended minutes. Just how'd that feel for you? Was that pretty exciting? Uh, it was definitely exciting. Um, something you dream of of doing um, as a kid. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. In the front row. Uh, LJ, uh, you guys played great defense second half. What do you have to do to maybe kind of start that way too? Um, just come out there, focus, locked in on the scout report and uh, make winning the main thing. Um, as long as we put winning in our minds and that's all that matters, we'll go out there and play great defense. We'll be in the third row in the aisle. Hey, I'm Mark Kisler with the Denver Post. You're both outstanding players. Um, on the rare occasions when you do mess up, how does a God-fearing man like Coach Drew chew you out? Uh, I mean, he, he chews us out by giving us more confidence as far as going out there and executing and actually doing that right. Uh, as a matter of fact, him chewing you out is not really it. It's more so knowing the fact that you made a mistake and you let your teammates down. So you kind of take it personally. And usually the guys in the team usually take that to heart. So just go out there and perform and fix your mistakes and move on to the next play. LJ, you want to respond to that? Uh, I think he hit it, hit it head on. Any yeah. <laughs> other questions out here? Go stay in the front row. This is for Flo. Uh, you guys hit the boards really well yesterday. Was that pretty much pounded in, into you guys' heads for a few days, and you feel like it paid off? Uh, most definitely. I mean, we pride ourselves on getting better on defense. And obviously, when you play defense, as much as you can guard, the reality is like you got to finish by getting a rebound. So we definitely like worked on that, made sure we, we end plays and just limit teams to one shot. the fourth row. LJ, John Morris, Baylor Radio. You guys have been in situations this year in tournaments where you've had quick turnarounds. Uh, explain how that helps you come to NCAA time. Um, I mean, quick turnarounds and earlier in the season is definitely going to help us because it's the same type of format um, as this tournament. So, um, I mean, we know what we have to do to get our legs under, um, under us like ice bath, Epsom sauce, stuff like that. So, I mean, we've been in this situation before, so it's nothing new to us. Second row. Yeah, Flo, I mean, I know y'all don't look around across the country or anything like that, but with the FDU over Purdue upset, and, and you've been playing college basketball a long time, watching it too, is college basketball maybe in the most, I mean, is this the most, is there the most parity in college basketball maybe right now in recent years? Uh, I mean, there's over 360 teams in Division One, and the reality is like you can't underestimate any team. And I mean, obviously with March Madness, like you're gonna have the best team of every conference. So the reality is you just gotta show up and you gotta play, and you can't take any game for granted, whether it be the first game or the last game. Well, the great thing is uh, when you when you win, it's always uh, uh, a great win in the NCAA tournament. Everyone knows the parity, and uh, it's the reason no one has a perfect bracket after the first two days. At the same time, the bad news is that means you're preparing for another really good team. And Coach McDermott and his staff do a great job. And uh, Creighton is uh, uh, one of those teams that uh, uh, ranks seventh in the nation. And then uh, an injury to Big Fella probably uh, uh, kept them from getting a three or four seed. Um, but it's a, it's a really good team, really well coached, a lot of respect for them. 
All right, we'll go to the right side, second row. John can go first. All right, we'll go to the left side then. Okay. First row. <laughs> Scott, uh, the, the challenge of, of facing uh, Ryan, the center, uh, what do you all have to do against him? Well, you don't face a lot of guys, uh, 7'1", 260, that have his skill level and his touch. And it leads the nation in field goal percentage, back-to-back -back Big East player of the year. So uh, part of his, his success is because the players around him, they do a great job getting them in the ball. Uh, they can shoot it, which spaces the floor. Um, and like any good team, they, they got – two or three things. I mean, so if you collapse on them, they can hit the three. If you stay out, um, they hurt you inside. So uh, with us, uh, this time of year, you, in a one-day prep, you, you are who you are. You do what you do. And um, you make a tweak here or there. But uh, definitely, everybody sees them on the court. You can't miss 7 one two sixty. OK, now we'll go to the right side. Off of that, how do you simulate 7 one two sixty in practice? Yeah, we got we got uh, um, cowboy boots for flow, so we're good. <laughs> but uh, uh, the good thing is we 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 got big guys, Josh, Flo, um, John, Zach. Uh, at the same time, uh, in the Big Twelve, you, every team's got some uh, some big guys. But uh, really, credit to uh, Creighton and their coaching staff for uh, doing a great job developing him and how to, how they utilize him. On the left side on the aisle. Mark Kislow, Denver Post. I know this is an old story to you, but indulge me if, if you'd okay. be so kind. Um, the 10 push-up idea, and if a player lets... For, for, for curse words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where, what was the genesis of that? And yeah. How does it work? Yeah. And is there a list of words? So, or, so our strongest guys on the team usually curse the most. Um, but uh, uh, Enrico Gathers obviously cursed every word because he was a beast. But uh, nah, just uh, uh, we have so many uh, uh, young kids that come to our practices, games. They're role models, um, and uh, I mean we all uh, curse. And uh, I'm not condemning anyone or judging anyone. Just we got no custom policy because I don't want a seven-year-old coming to our practice, going home and and, and dropping f bombs and say learning it from our players or coaches. One set of ten, you should get it done, or or, or well, hit. sometimes we got to do lines. <laughs> Just like parenting, you know, you have different different degrees, different amounts, and uh, uh, usually the problem gets resolved. We're to the right side, fourth row. Scott, I'm Vinny Benedetto with the Denver Gazette. I'm just curious what you remember from that 2014 NCAA tournament matchup against Creighton. I mean, that was that was uh, a long time ago. Um, I had a lot more hair back then. We, we were a different team. We had a lot of size, length. We had a good zone. And I know that was a game that they just missed a bunch of shots. They had some good looks. And some games they go in, some games they don't. And um, I, I, I know, uh, uh, again, Coach McDermott's a, a great coach and had a lot of success. And um, uh, they're never going to beat themselves. And you really got to be on point um, so that uh, you give your guys every chance to be successful. We'll stay on the right side, third row. Hey, Coach, uh, just how much are you preaching getting off to a fast start in this game after kind of you know, seeing two different sides of your team in the first half versus the second half in the last game? Well, I think uh, uh, coaches always know that uh, you, you prefer to get off to fast starts. But uh, um, we had a coach, Coach Driscoll, used to always say early leads mean nothing. And at the end of the day, it's a 40-minute game. You have to handle uh, being up, being down. Um, the adversity, success of it all. Uh, at, at this level, teams don't go away. Uh, you look at two of the upsets. I think um, Arizona was up 10. Virginia was, excuse me, Arizona was up 12 in the second half, and Virginia was up 12 in the second half. Uh, I know Tennessee's beating Duke right now, and they were up 18, and then Tennessee won by three in the end. So it, the game is you so many runs with the three-point line, with the athleticism. Um, you just got to do whatever you can to be successful each possession. Down here in front row on the left. Scott, did you recruit Baylor Shireman, and is that going to be? He definitely got the best name in the tournament. <laughs> I mean, did do you know? But did you know much about him in recruiting, or did you see no? Then uh, yeah. until at the transfer portal, and we 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 didn't need that position at the time. But uh, um, uh, Coach Mills played against him and said he was a heck of a player. And obviously, watching him, uh, he's a heck of a player. And again, love his name. And uh, <laughs> hopefully, this Baylor does better than that Baylor tomorrow. <laughs> 
We'll go to the second row on the right. In terms of that, he, he has the similar quality to your guards where it seems like once he crosses half court, yeah. he's got a liability to shoot. Does that help going having Adam and LJ and Keontae kind of know what mm -hmm. guarding that is like in practice? Well, well definitely uh, uh, having talented players in depth allow you to fo face and focus everything that you're going to see in a game. And uh, uh, Baylor, the unique thing about him is his size at six foot seven, being able to shoot it so deep and pass it. And he's a fun player to watch and uh, uh, definitely uh, one of the most skilled players in the college game. Back over here on the aisle. I want to go back to something you just, you just said, the runs. Um, mm -hmm. Knuckleheads like me usually say, I, you know, the coach has to stop the run when the mm -hmm. other team's like, get your time out. Mm -hmm. I haven't thought about it the other way. How, do you know when a run's coming from for your team, yeah. and how do you coach up runs? Well, if we if we could do that and make them to order, every coach would start the game with a run <laughs> and have that run go the entire game. Uh, I, I, you, you know what? You you feel the momentum. You feel it. You feel it just. Uh, uh, in the arena when, when the crowd, when the other team has confidence, you feel it when you have confidence and when you have energy. And uh, it's amazing how quick they can start and, and things that lead to them starting. I mean, um, an open shot that you miss that normally you hit or uh, missing two free throws or j just anything. Um, but today the, the games change so quick. Um, and it starts with the three-point line and the athleticism, the pace of the game. Uh, it, it's uh, without a, with the shot clock each and every year, it's gotten reduced. Uh, you just have, it's like the NBA. I mean, you can turn on the last three minutes because up to that point, you never know what's going to happen. We'll go to the right side, okay. far right. Side uh, Jokic in a triple-double. Jeff Lightball, the SPN. Uh, I'm just, could you go back to everyone wants to limit Kulkbrenner's ability to get the ball. Can you just expound on yeah. what you think they do well to keep getting it to him? Well, I, I, first, they, they run great sets. They have great spacing. Um, he's a big target. I mean, it's like a big tight end in football across the middle. It's hard to guard them. And uh, I mean, you can front them. You can double them, try to push them out. Uh, you can be physical with them. You play zone. Um, but 7-1, uh, they do a great job keeping four shooters around them, four skilled players around them. Uh, if you have a team that can't shoot, then you can really pack it in. So again, I, 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 that makes it all difficult to guard him. We'll stay on the right side, Coach. In terms of Langston, how do you think he did in the couple minutes that he that he mm -hmm. returned to the court and was not utilizing him as much in the second half? Was there something that maybe he was still getting bothered by, or was that just the flow of the game? Yeah, uh, Langston uh, wanted to try to give it a go, and uh, again, I think this is when you just come back from an injury. Uh, Sonny for them was back, but didn't really play till the very last minute of the game. It's hard when you miss practice and then all of a sudden go out there without having a chance to get uh, the rhythm and routine. So it's really important uh, to get him some minutes because I think that'll open up possibly in the future to get him more. Um, obviously, practice days would help, but we don't have that right now. We'll go online for our next question. That'll come from. We'll go to Matt Lively. One moment, Matt. We'll open your line. Maybe open his line. Technical difficulty on my part. We'll figure it out here. We'll go ahead. We've got one in the front row here. And we'll figure this out online here. Scott, I'm trying to think back. Have y'all faced anybody who compares to Colt Garner? Seems, seems like most teams yeah. are so guard oriented these days. Yeah, uh, I think I go back to the Kansas teams with Doak, McCormick. I think that that size probably simulates them a lot more than than uh, you're right. Current basketball, uh, there are several great centers, but um, in the Big Twelve this year, we were a little smaller than we normally have been. Go on the right side, Coach. You, I mean, both these teams have a lot of NCAA tournament experience now, especially you guys. I mean, how much does that mean? You've already had a game under your belt here mm -hmm. in similar situation. I guess, what do you think that means going into, you know, a game on Sunday? 
I know experience, every coach would rather have it than not have it. Uh, but it, again, in this tournament, in a one game setting, there is no exact recipe for success. Um, you watch a team play one day, and then you say the next, I, they're, they're going to the Sweet 16, you turn on the score, and they got blown out. I mean, every game's different, um, every matchup's different. And uh, I often heard this like, the ball's in the air, good coach, bad coach, good coach, bad coach. And, uh, I mean, with the many one possession games we've had, I mean, anything can happen. Uh, coaches just want to uh, control everything we can control with the team and uh, 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 meaning play winning basketball, take good shots, not turn the ball over, do a good job on defensive assignments. And then uh, if the shots are falling, that helps. If they're not, you got to find other ways to, to stay in games. Any questions here on the second row on the left? Foster Nicholas, Baylor Lariat. Coach, you talked about the parity earlier. Two 16 seeds have taken down one seeds in the past five mm -hmm. years. Is that a trend that can continue, and how has the competition of college basketball increased? Oh, mo mo most definitely. I mean, uh, I, I mean, it's just going to get more and more uh, so-called upsets. And I, you, you look at it, and uh, players see numbers in one and 16, and it's like rankings. You see someone rank. 40th or 30th, and you just assume they're a lot better than someone 300th. I mean, uh, what was Steph rank coming out? You know, I mean, uh, and with the COVID and people playing five and six years, uh, I mean, it, Keontae's a, a, a freshman of the year in our league, and I said, how many 13-year-olds are beating you? And, I mean, he's facing guys that are five and six years older than him. So, I mean, I, we, people got to remember all that, and sometimes uh, uh, we don't. Or the right side. Coach, we saw you go pretty much nine deep in terms of guys getting double digit yeah. minutes yesterday. Was that a more a Denver focused altitude getting guys mm -hmm. a breaks thing, or is that something we could see even as you guys go deeper into the postseason? Uh, I think I think uh, everything's on the table each and every game. The great thing is we got guys that if their number's called, they're gonna they're gonna play. And if their number's not called, they're gonna be great teammates on the bench. Um, but we have confidence in uh, played ten, we have confidence in all ten and uh, I think, especially in altitude, that's something uh, uh, that first game, early game, um, we, we knew we wanted to do. As far as uh, uh, moving forward, whatever game plan gives us the best chance to be successful. Uh, and it's such a luxury when you have uh, uh, players that let you uh, coach them. And it's not about them, it's about the team. So if it's four minutes, they give you a great four minutes and great teammates on the bench. It's not. Why am I only playing four? And they're pouting and distracting. And I think teams that win have that this time of year. And the right side on the aisle. Uh, Scott, what is playing Dale at point guard a lot more these last two games, given the team that maybe you all didn't have before that? I think it gives uh, uh, Adam a chance to uh, rest a little and Adam a chance to come off some different actions. And also, uh, uh, Dale does a great job in uh, 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 getting guys shots. and. Uh, it's just a different look. So uh, in Dale's energy, because uh, Adam plays a lot of minutes, it allows Adam to uh, uh, rest a little bit off the ball, where when you're on it, obviously, it's a lot harder. Any additional questions for Coach? Man, you guys had good questions today. You had your coffee, you're ready to go. We'll follow up here on the left-hand side. Yes, yeah, Scott, Michael Higg, Baylor, Larry. Just to get LJ back out there after what he dealt with last year, I mean, you talked about it a yeah. little bit, but just how good was that to see? It's it's still, I mean, LJ's a junior, and uh, our trainer said, like, when we were playing at Oklahoma State, this first time LJ's played here. And you just forget about that. So you love a guy that uh, uh, comes back and face, from adversity and injuries and uh, having a chance, just like Jonathan Chama Chachua. Um, you love it that they have an opportunity to play. Yeah, sorry, one more. Josh O yesterday, I mean, in the pick and roll defense especially, it seemed like he was active. I mean, what was he giving you and what can he maybe continue to give? Yeah, he, he's really uh, improved the last couple of weeks in practice, even though he hadn't been playing. Uh, when we practice, he's really been good. And this time of year, you really don't have freshmen anymore. And so uh, his learning curve was tough because he wasn't here in the summer much. And uh, he's really been progressing. So that's why we wanted to give him a chance. And he gave us a good lift.